we're going to get this interview started, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to welcome my main man, Mo Creek. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I asked my man to get on the interview real quick. There's a lot of stuff going on out here, man. And felt like my man needed this just do. You don't you don't do a lot of a lot of talking and a lot of stuff like I kind of noticed that. The game know? does it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you for coming on tonight. You know what I'm saying? And, and giving us a chance to hear your side of the story, what you had going on in your career. What's going on, man? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm just mad, you know, the season ended or whatever after this coronavirus thing, but you know, I'm home safe and sound and I'm with my guys right now. We out here playing the game, trying to stay safe from everything. And, you know, everybody doing well, so I'm blessed. So it looks like you're off right now. So you say you're with the guys. Now, it looks like you must have caught one because you off and taking your time with us. I don't know if you took the time to do that or not, but I'm going to just let everybody wonder that on their own. Now, <laughs> first question, man. Um, I, first of all, before we get started, I want to just throw it out there, man. Mo Creek is one of the, one of the best basketball players that I personally – uh, came up with in, in my time, man. We, you know what I mean, around the same age. And um, he came up playing. Uh, he'll explain who he came up playing for and all of that kind of stuff. But definitely want to give you a just do and let you know, man, you're one of the most talented players that I came across. Definitely. And I don't mind saying that even though we're the same age. I get mine. So I'm definitely not tripping. You feel me? Yeah. So um, One of the smoothest games, shall we add? Yeah, for sure. Appreciate, and, um, appreciate that for sure. First thing I want to get to, man, is uh, kind of let the people know where you're from, where you came up playing basketball at, man, and if basketball was even your first love. Let me know what was going on when you was coming up. I'm from Oxford Hill, Maryland. Uh, been there since I was three. Uh, I was born and raised in Calvin County, Maryland. A lot of people don't know where it's at. That's in the countryside. And, um, you know, all my cousins are down there. We play, play basketball with each other, and I got better because they're older than me. Um, and they used to beat me up a lot. And that's where, you know, coming to the city time, I mean, that's where I found out, like, the game could get a little easier. You know what I mean? I, I'm already used to the game because of them or whatever. But um, basketball's always been my love. I ain't really getting to know of the sports for real, for real. So I've been grinding with my uh, stepfather. Uh, he's been my trainer ever since I touched the ball. And, uh, you know, we've been going at it ever since. And he just – you know, kept me grinding every day, and I'm getting better every day. You said your family was from Calvert County. Yeah. My whole family's from Calvert County. Oh, for real? <laughs> the whole thing. As soon as you cross into Calvert County on Route 2, that first light, that's yeah. my whole – yeah. Everybody in my family lives in Calvert County. That's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, man. So, um, did you – so you said you kind of grew up playing in Calvert County. Who was some of the – like you said, some of your cousins or some of your older relatives you played with? Yeah. Um, who were some of those guys that you, you came up with early that kind of gave you that game and gave you that drive to play? I mean, it wasn't like, you know, people that uh, that I went to school with because when I started playing basketball, I started going to school in Oxford Hill. Uh, I didn't really get an opportunity to uh, start off in Calvary County. But, like, a lot of my older cousins that, uh, you know, are down there and always been down there with, you know, you put up a court and everybody playing 33 and – yeah. Getting memes and stuff like that. That's yeah. where it really all started, for real, for real. Facts. That's a fact. All right, man. So, okay, you gravitate from to, to the basketball thing kind of early. Um, who was one of your favorite players when you was coming up? Like, was there somebody in the league that you looked at that was, that was older that you kind of wanted to model your game after or that you got to drive from the play or did it just come from within? Did you just get that on your own? Um. I mean, when I started growing up, I, of course, everybody watched Michael Jordan, but uh, one of my favorites, Penny Hardaway, and that's when I got the love for Orlando Magic as a kid because I used to watch him all the time. As I got, uh, you know, all the way to the Tracy McGrady days when he started playing with Orlando, Tracy McGrady was my all. He's my all-time favorite. Very underrated. Player. I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. That that's who I really want to. Models my 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 my, uh, my game towards Tracy because he's he's smooth, you know he's long lanky like me, you know what I mean? Like he got that Jimmy on deck. That's yeah. that's who I really wanted to model my game by. I'm not as athletic as Tracy because he's athletic, but you know when it's doing the moves and stuff like that, that's who I want to model my game by. That's a fact, bro. I I can I can believe that for sure. Yeah. Um, so. Around middle school, did do you remember or do you remember what point you started playing AAU or did you play rec ball first or what was the 
How was the, the transition, the transition for that? Well, I started playing, um, like, doing the little regulars when I was seven. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my father was on my, my like, my coaching staff um, with Coach Smith. That's when I was my first team I played for Temple Hills Rec Center. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid. And um, I just moved up ever since then with the Oxygen Hill Rec, Rec Center and then kept going up there and then Oxygen Hill Middle, Oxygen Hill High. Then I started transferring to all these schools in high school and then I finished up at hard grades. And, you know, right. the, the most important thing is just getting better every year, you know, right. not not downgrading. You know what I'm saying? You get good one year and you downgrade the next year. My whole thing was just I wanted to stay on course and, you know what I mean, just – Levitate, to, levitate my game to a higher level. And when I got to Indiana, that's what my whole goal was, just staying on course and everything. You're moving a little fast, Mo. Uh, you're moving uh, a little uh, fast, uh, all right? I'm uh, slow uh, you down. I'm going to bring you back to middle school because you're <laughs> all the way to graduated and everything. Uh, you're coming up and, and, and you're playing rec league, especially in, in, like you said, in Temple Hills and Oxen Hill. In that area, it was very rich at that time. You know what I mean? As far as – especially in your area, as yes. far as basketball is concerned. Sure. So do you remember who was, like, some of the guys that you was, like, playing with or playing against that you noticed, like, yo, he, he got it too. You feel me? Like, because I know you felt like you had it. So who was somebody else that you seen that you felt like, oh, this this dude got it? Like, he, he made me step my game up a little bit. Do you remember at an early age who that was around middle school before you got to high school? I mean, there's a lot of guys that were like that. Uh, and it was one one guy in particular when I was in middle school – I would say uh, James Stewart. That was, uh, you know, rest in peace to him. But, like, I played against him. Uh, he was, like, strong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody. I ain't, I ain't never seen nobody like that that strong in middle school. And he had game. And I was like, oh, he might. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he could be a pro, like, type dude. Like, but it's a yeah. lot of guys that I can't I even – I don't even think I can name right now because so many guys that – you know what I mean? Like, grow, even growing up, like, twins, when we played District Heights, the twins, they were so crafty and so elite, like, at the small age, like, that we ain't even seen. And I was like, yo, these two right here are nasty. Or uh, Chad Wilson, like, when he played for Upper Marlboro, like, he was, like, strong. He was damn near dunking when we were little. So it was, like, something that I ain't never seen before. Like, it's a lot of guys that was in the, the, in the area that, you know what I mean, can get busy and it really made me like try to step up with them guys you know what I mean right yeah. all right so yeah we we kind of covered that now what was the point that you knew that you was up there with them or who asked did you bust in order to get that no we're not gonna play around with it yeah, you know. if I get better than this guy yeah. I know I, I know where I want to be at yeah, that, that, <laughs> not even for the clickbait but it's just like hey, this is a question I ask everybody because I'm gonna give you a prime example I don't mind it it was a dude in my neighborhood when I moved up the road, Don Cage. Everybody talking about Don Cage, this, Don Cage. I seen Don Cage bust his ass. You feel me? And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm here. So what was that point for you? Who was it out there that you caught? Or you, they don't, they might not even know that you was looking at it like that. Who was that? Um, shit. I, I honestly, like, it's it's been a lot of times where I surprised myself. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. When I played against Silver Hill when I was little, those that's always been a rival, you know, Oxy Hill, Silver Hill, always a rival. And it was like one time where you know, I was just tearing their ass up, like going at them, going at them, going at them. I'm like, yo, this 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 is it. Like, you know, yeah. I'm, like, I'm I'm actually getting to my no, not my peak, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this I'm getting to that stage where I I know what type of time it is now, you know what I mean? So it was it was like one those are one of the times and then I know you ain't trying to get too far ahead, but I gotta go to high school. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Was, that's when fine. I, when I uh let's just transition there. Let's yeah, just transition in right high there. School, when I had came back from Mount Zion, my uh my ninth grade year after I reclassed my ninth grade year mm -hmm. and um went back to Oxen Hill, I was like I, I knew I was gonna tear that shit up. You know what I mean? Like it just was in my mindset that that Mount Playing as a ninth grader on the national team at, at Mount Zion and actually getting time there and, you know what I mean, actually getting offers. And my all my first offer, for real, for real, was, uh, it was um, Miami when I, was at, uh, when I was at Mount Zion. 
in ninth grade. Like it, in ninth grade. Okay. So like playing with them guys like uh Joel Barkers that's from here, like uh Rashawn McLemore that uh that's from the uh Virginia area, like going against them guys every day and then coming back to Oxon Hill, I was like, Yeah, this this is gonna be my year. And then when we played Suitland, I gave them forty. Oh okay. Like, yeah, I was like, Yeah, this 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 my year. Okay. All right, so like you said, you jump forward. I'm gonna bring you back one more time. You you go from eighth grade. What 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 uh middle school were you going to? I was going to uh, Oxford Hill Middle. So what what was like? What was the process of you going to Mount Zion? Did you say you went to Mount Zion in that grade, then reclass? Yeah, no. So I was at Oxford Hill High School first. Okay. And then, okay. You know, it was it, I was my JV year. I went to play for JV. I was on a varsity team, but didn't really get a chance to play. I was practicing with the guys, but I didn't really get a chance to actually play like how I wanted to or how I thought I could get in there and do a little something. But then it just came about like my dad was like, hey, we want to like switch you all to a better opportunity for yourself. And um, let's try, let's try Mount Zion Christian Academy. So we went down there on a road trip. Never forget it. Went down there on a road trip or whatever. And they had me play against a guy. Um, I don't remember his name, but they went down there and played against him. I think it was like a challenge to see who was actually going to school at that at that school. And I bust his ass. Mm -hmm. But I, the crazy thing was I was so scared because I thought my mom and dad was going to leave me down there. Oh, you know, nah, yeah. Leave me down there like I was like, nah, you staying here type shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But um, when I got to Mount Zion or whatever, like it was something different. You know, Christian yeah. school school. Yeah, uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? But it drew me into it because I was Tracy McGrady High School. You know, that's, that's what I was. Yeah, I was going. You know I mean, so it drew me in to to do. I mean, to going to that school and actually wanting to play or whatever. And I I did well there, and it was a learning experience. And like I said, I had a couple of guys there that were from the area and everything, so it was kind of cool. Yeah, Mount. Being at Mount Zion, I was gonna ask you: Did you did you know anything about all of the pedigree coming in? Because they had T Mac, they had Amari for a brief second. That was yeah. So that's a, that's I, a, I forgot about Amari. Amari was yeah. there second too. Yeah, that's a factory. So do you? Was it a major difference in the 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 training, the practices? What was the what was the differences in them two? It was a difference. It was a mad difference, but. Like we played a lot when I was at Mount Zion, okay. so it kind of got we kind of got this stuff flowing because everybody knew what everybody liked to do. You know what I mean? Right, and right. Every, like it, it, I can't really say it was too much of a difference. We played a lot in Oxford Hill too, but you know what I'm saying the 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 level of like how the how the players were like you know people was so smooth, crafty, and and everything. Like, it it just was crazy. You know, I had like a couple of people that actually went to the primetime colleges from there. I mean, a lot of people forgot about uh, one of my guys, Tracy Smith, that played at uh, North Carolina State when he was in college. And he was getting busy down there, too. So it was – I had a I had a mob, so I had to actually get my own type deal. Like, yeah. it, was, it was it was a fun experience, though, because I was a ninth grader and nobody knew what to expect. And, you know, I just went out there and did what I did. And, you know, it just went on from there. And you got minutes. You said you got minutes, right? Yeah, I got minutes for them, yeah. Getting an offer in that grade from D1 Miami, that's that's crazy. Oh, you know what I mean? Very tough. Yeah. So, so when, were you playing with Triple Threat around then? Like, were you coming back home or were you just Yeah. Out so, all right. So, the, the crazy thing about this was um, around the time of that, I was playing with Team Disciples first, which was uh, my coach. Um, Coach Sean Briggs team, that was my father's man or whatever, and we was actually good. Mm -hmm. Then I transferred the uh, uh, main event Cobras, well, they, you know what I'm saying, that was um, Artie's team, and uh, Coach Artie's team. Then we went to Triple Threat, and that was Coach Artie's team. And now, like, it was like Keith and Artie, Keith and Artie type deal, and that's when everything started to click together. It was before ninth grade year that I started playing with them, but right. that's when everything started to click off to – you know what I'm saying? Like, getting that mad exposure and stuff like that, too, because we were winning. And a lot of people don't know, like, at that triple threat age, like, when I was in triple threat, 
we didn't really have no sponsors, nothing like that. We were wearing like Reebok jerseys, anything that we can put orange, on. Orange, yellow. <laughs> there was yep. orange, nasty looking joints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we ran into yeah. to some trouble with our teams or who, in the tournaments we was playing in around it because we all the same age. I that. don't think. I, I, know know I know we did. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have been you. I got mine. I know that. We <laughs> lost. I'm just throwing it out there. I know I got mine. You feel me? But anyway, um, to talk about the triple threat and to talk about AAU. Who were some of the like the best teammates you played with that you would say? Because like I said, you're you're dealing with a you're dealing with a a, a hotbed of talent in that area. That I'm up threat? here. I'm up. Yeah, I'm up for triple threat or any time in your AAU experience. What were some notable teammates that kind of stood out later that uh that you played with? I would have to say um that my last year playing, we were super we were stacked. Like E Green was my point guard. Mm. <laughs> Kayvon Moore is my, my wingman. <laughs> Chris Braswell was my forward. <laughs> uh, Hold on, Kayvon, you said Kayvon Moore? Yeah. Oh, man, that's, that's crazy. Uh, Dwayne Jackson, high flyer. Raphael Putney, uh, we call him skinny man, but Raphael Putney was a high flyer. Mm. We had a lot of guys that could get the job done. So Facts. That, that, that was one of the... I think one of the best teams I've ever been a part of because they all of us were cool. Like all of us knew what to do. Mm -hmm. We go out there and play hard regardless. They were not they wasn't allowing nothing nothing less. So yeah. Yeah, that's a bet, man. That's a bet. So mm -hmm. now that I've caught back up to your speed, we're in high school now. You go back to Oxon Hill, you say you dominating, you you giving Suitland forty. Was that sophomore year or was this junior year? That was Technically, it was supposed to be my junior year, but it was my sophomore. So I'm more year. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. So you say you, you that's when you kind of knew, and that's that's when the, the transition came, or you knew you was on that level. Whereas though, I'm not really, y'all ain't really affecting me too much. I'm I'm getting mine. Y'all not doing, y'all not on my level. So you you moving yeah. on to the next year. Um, are you still at Oxon Hill the following year for your junior year? Nah, with the South Kent Prep School. Okay, where's that located? It's in Connecticut. How? So you go from <laughs> you go from PG to Connecticut. I know that was tough. first of all. You go from North Carolina back home. Back home. Then you go up to Connecticut. Yeah. How was that? How how did that transition go? It was different, mad different. Because I mean, no, it was a lot less people. All boys school. You know, it's just basically like. It was basically like to, to to get myself straight with like school, yeah, and everything like that too. Because at that time, now you know, I would I ain't gonna lie, I would really I'm not a school person, so mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like when I was at Oxon Hill, it was like, you know, I ain't even worrying about it. Like I'm playing basketball, I'm trying right. to do what I can do and get basketball. But then my parents were like, you know, fool, you gotta do SATs, you gotta do ACT, you gotta do something. Yeah, like, you know what I mean, like. You got to make sure you get this thing squared away. So um, I ended up going to South Kent. And the crazy thing about it was I played I played with, uh, with two NBA guys that was on my team at that time, Isaiah Thomas and Deion Waiters. Deion was younger than me, and Isaiah was older than me. So I was, like, in the middle grade of everybody and everything like that. I mean, we were – it was kind of – a crazy experience because the fact of the matter was we had all the time in the world yeah losing because we ain't know how to jail together you know yeah I mean? jail so i mean because isaiah at that time he was cranking off like getting like 50s a game i'm talking about like isaiah would like crank off i think he had like three 55 point games and you playing with weight and then you got waiters on us <laughs> Dion didn't even the crazy thing about it Dion didn't even start he didn't start for us he came off he came with the six man for us and like he was getting busy, like I was getting, I think I averaged like 22, 22 that year. Okay. So we got all the time, we just wasn't winning. Yeah. Just, uh, but to average 22 with a like guy that's NBA players, hey, bro. Yeah. yeah something that's at, at this point, you, you got it at this point. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie. You can sit there and be Mo Creek, uh, ah, yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Isaiah right here, ladies off the bench. You can do that all you want. You're getting it in at this point. So you, you, you leave there and you go to Harvard. Well, actually, before I do that, 
Was it a notable game that you had while you was up there that you can talk about? I know you said Isaiah was getting 50s, but like, what you, was a game that you had when you was like, man, I, you fried somebody? Or like, what was? It was a couple of times. Like, I had I had my 30s fair share, like, just going off. So, like, I think the, the one notable game that we did have, but we ended up losing the game. That was my last game. But no, 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 no. No, that's hard, Greg. But uh, I th I know it was a couple of times I didn't had like twenty five, thirty out there, and mm -hmm. you know, that's just what I do. You know what I mean? Like it, they, it was basically like a free fall. Like go ahead, get yours. Go ahead, get yours. Go ahead, get yours. You know what I mean? So at that time, like I, we were doing, we needed to do. We just couldn't win. Right. All right. Okay. So now you move on from from that school and. Do you go straight? I mean, what was the what, what made you go to Hargrave? Was it like a decision you had to make, or what was what was the process? It was a tough decision that I had to make because I damn sure wasn't ready for the military side. Military of school, yeah, I've been down there, bro. <laughs> I've been down you. there, yo. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was going back and forth about this decision for a long period of time, and the crazy thing about it was I was supposed to go there for two years. It was yeah. I was instead of going to South Kent, I was supposed to go to Hargrave Military Academy with my brother Chris for two years and I was mm. like, ah, I don't know about that. Let me go ahead and go to South Kent. I'd rather go ahead, go to South Kent for that one year and then get transfer over. But uh it was a it was uh it was a crazy thing when I went to uh Hargrave. It was I was like, yo, this is wow. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get up. I got Did you have up. the ball here? Huh? No, did they make... I didn't have, okay, so now nah, I didn't have to cut my hair all the way down, uh -huh. but I, all of this, gone. gone. <laughs> they was not playing with it. That's why I asked you. I had a little piece for it. They said, you got to get rid of that. I said, yeah, yeah, cut that off. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so you get the hard grave, right? And is this where all of the dots connect? Is this where you kind of have this game figured out and you, you really knew that she was ready to go to the next level? Because now it's like, you get you at the door, you know what I mean. All the offers is in, and and, and they're starting to come in. But now you at the door, whereas though you gotta make this noise now. And what was that like? What was that year like? If you could put it into to a short words, it was it was probably one of the most comfortable years of basketball that I probably had because I didn't really have to worry about too much no more because I already committed to Indiana my junior year. So when I was at South Kent, I had to. I felt like I had to make a decision around the time of like the end of the ending break of my junior year. So I could be more comfortable going into my senior year. Right. And I had chose Indiana over Miami tough decision there. Like it was going back and forth decision. Like I wanted to play for Miami. I wanted to play right. for Indiana, but I, I knew the history of Indiana and like it has more of a basketball school. Miami yeah, is like a football school, 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 right? At that time, yeah, at that time, Miami was more so a football school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Miami Hurricanes football fan. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, okay. I would love, yeah, but for sure. But our basketball team definitely was all right. But yeah, yeah Jack, Jack yeah, was, yeah. was Jack, Jack still there? Was there? Yeah, he was mm -hmm. there. Was Jack McClinton still at Miami at that time? Yep, he was still there. Yep. Oh my god! Yeah, and and I, and I think about it, think back at it now. Like I don't regret my decision of going to Indiana or whatever at all. But now I think about it now. If I would have went to Indiana, it'd have been me, Shane Larkin, Kenny Kaji. Uh, I would have been with uh, McClinton for one year. Mm -hmm. I would have. <laughs> they went to the Final Four. That was the year. At that next year, they was beating everybody. I would have been on that team. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's wild right there. So, I mean, not the and you already kind of no, spoke on it, but go ahead. But in the end, that's 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 in the realms with you know like the the blue bloods of basketball. Like it's different. Like Indiana basketball is like different. That's up there with like the Kentucky. Oh, the for Houston, sure, you got that, you know what I'm saying? national championship. That's something else. Man. Yeah, bro. I, I mean, that's the that's what I was gonna say. Was that the determining factor? Knowing the history that was in Indiana. You know what I mean? Out of all of the schools that she was choosing, is that what made you go to Indiana? Yeah, I think it was the uh, the break of what it really was just because of the fact that it was just the basketball school. It was basically like I'm here at home now and, and, and everything like that. So 
I'm good now. I I ain't had no regrets. Like I said, no regrets about where I went and everything. So I'm actually blessed that I actually picked them. That's a fact. That's a fact. And you was out in the end getting busy, right? You starting. Yeah, starting, averaging 18 points a game as a freshman, 17.6, 17.6, something like that. As yeah, a we freshman. wanted to, uh, the one question we had, we wanted to touch on was the, uh, that 30 point you put on uh, the Wildcats. We, we was, we was well, like, I, yeah, what's like, going on with that? Yeah, you know? uh, what, what, like, going into that game, like, how did you feel? Like, cause that, that's a, that's a big, a big team. Yeah. Always ranked nationally high, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. how like how did you feel going into like a game of that magnitude? I was pumped up the whole time. Like I I knew me and John like kind of knew each other. That I knew a couple of guys. Oh, so, so that's what we were trying to figure. That was John John Wall was still on that team. Yeah, Wall, Bledsoe, Cousins, okay. Patterson. Yeah, <laughs> they was thick. Miller, yeah, yeah. Miller, Miller, that was that group. So my my whole thing with that Kentucky game was I'm always watching them on TV. We wasn't getting no recognition. We were young. We was coming in with six freshmen. They were coming in with freshmen, but they they all talented. You know what I mean? Highly ranked and everything like that. Fourth ranked team in the country. I didn't sleep the the that that after, before that game. I didn't, I ain't sleep the whole night. Like you know what I mean? I was up to you? like seven o'clock in the morning. Took a little nap. Did my little shoot around, took the nap before the game, and was amped to go out there and play. Like, but I, I was, I think it for me, it was just I uh, had to calm myself down before the game even started. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the times, a lot of people like to listen to rap music before. You know? At that time, I was listening to R and B music. Now, Not alone. You, okay, you can knock me if you want to, but. Like when some like when somebody's going out there and with a with a mindset of like, oh I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, you kinda go off the brink like you're not gonna do it. You know what I mean? So my thing was you gotta calm down, know you playing against this team, know you wanna do well, but this can this can make your career if you do really well. So uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Just chill out a little bit. So I'm sitting there, got my little headphones on, bump my little R and B R and B music or whatever and you know what I'm saying? We go out there, and we down one at the half. And I'm, I think I already had, like, 18 at that time. I was just – anything that I shot was going in that basket. Like, I was locked in. John Wall, Boogie. I don't know. I, I'm not going to lie to you, yo. Somebody, If I get Boogie and John Wall in them buckets, nah, somebody's going to hit listen, me. Listen, bro. I looked at the stat. I looked at the stats of the game. The same thing was what five or eight from the three point line or something like that. Yeah. He was letting it fly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It wasn't it's gracious. So this is a and this is as a freshman. And yeah, freshman. This wasn't a quiet. Some you know some thirties is quiet. This wasn't a quiet thirty. Nah, this wasn't, this wasn't quiet. A quiet wow, that wasn't quiet at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, funny is that to Hey, yo, yo, you crazy as <laughs> shit, yo. I'm telling you that now, yo. Listen. All right, so do you remember, like, all right, what game of the season? Was, was that early or was that a little, like, a little bit into it? Yeah, it was a little early. It was, it was a little early. So I ain't going to lie. If I, if I come out there and get them 30, every one of them is going to the league. I don't think in draft. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> what was you thinking after that? Was you thinking draft? Was you thinking big things? House on the hill. Was you living in Lake Auburn? Put it, be serious. I was, I was gone. You was gone. I was gone. It was no, it was nothing. Nobody could tell me like at that time. I'm a kid. My dream was to always play in the NBA. Right there. After that game or whatever, everything. That's when everything ran off. Like you know what I mean. Like that's when all this. I started seeing everything. Draft board. Time yeah. Five. Another draft board, top ten. I'm like, oh, I'm gone. 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 <laughs> Damn. Damn, I'm gone. Bro. And then, like, you know what I mean? It just, it just was like I talked to my parents about it and all that other stuff. Like, my dad was already like, you can always go back to school. You can always go back and get your degree. There ain't no, not, not too many times you can go and make millions of dollars doing something. Right. So, yeah, I was gone. 
Now, I'd imagine now you're a freshman on this in this thing, you know what I mean? And you go out, get them 30. We're going to keep saying it until the interview is over. Gave them 30. I don't care. So, I imagine you catching some – are you catching any static from the upper helm, or is anybody giving you any static, or are they kind of pushing you to, to keep going? Because this is a part of the game. Like, this is for the youngins right here. You feel me? Because a lot of youngins might catch this joint, and they might be the man in their situation as youngsters. Having yeah. to deal with some old heads that's hating on you, how do you do – and I want to know, which, from your perspective, was they pushing you forward to keep going, or was it like a little bit of stat? Did you feel any stat? You, you can talk about teammates? Teammate-wise? Yeah, teammate-wise. Oh, okay. Statutes of limitations is up. You can tell them. Yeah, hey, you know, when you when – you, you, know, so you have one of these good games, you can easily have a bad game. You right. know what I mean? So my that was my always my mindset. Like that game ended. Now I'm moving on to the next game. Now that I know like what I'm capable of doing, I can go ahead and keep doing it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that's how good players get great. They always try right. to continue to be the best player that they can be, no matter what they do at what period of time, whatever. Okay, that's facts. That's facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving forward. Would you like to explain the rest of how this season played out? Because I don't want to. <laughs> Me either. If, you, uh, if, I, yeah, if I do so. it, it's going to be quick. So you you decide if you want to do it or you want to let me do it. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, it's cool for me to do it. Let them like, know what's uh, going on, man. So, like, after that game or whatever, like, I, I had, like, 29 on uh, North Carolina Central. And that's another – that's when – um the static started to bump up even more just because of the fact that uh, the last freshman to get 30, a 30 piece in two games back to back was Eric Gordon. Seven. <laughs> so I was close to that. I was one point off of that. And, you know, that's when everybody was like, Oh yeah. Like it start starting to rise even more, starting to rise even more, starting to rise even more. So, um, played that game or whatever. Then we get to, um, we get to um, team Bryant College or whatever. So, funny story about that. I was having a bad game. Couldn't put the ball in the basket for nothing. And um, we were up by 50, but I had, like, nine points. And to my justification, like, I think, like, he wanted me to keep playing so I can get my keep my average up type deal. And so, like, I stole the ball and was going down the lane. Um it was me and one other person. So, like, I'm looking at him. I'm about to go get this bucket. He looking at it like I'm not about to give him the bucket. So, um, stole it. Going out for a fast break. I go to lay the ball up. This dude literally swipes down at the ball. And so, instead of hitting the ball, he hits my knee going down. And so, like, I didn't feel anything at first. Yeah. Until like uh like when I looked at it, I was like, Oh shit. Like mm. my whole my whole knee was just separated apart type thing. Mm. And like I tried to get up and then when I fell back down, that's when I knew like it was not like over for the season, like for sure. Yeah. I couldn't even, I couldn't even um I couldn't even basically move. Yeah. So it's a thousand emotions at that point. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. So, you, you, you land on the floor. You, you kind, of, they come out and they, they take you to the back. Kind of talk about what's on your brand that at that point. Because I, like I said, my, in my other interviews and I talk to people. I always talk about there's two sides of this coin. You feel me? I'm, the highs and the super lows. And I've been on that side of the. Injury he's part. been on that side as far as the injury part too. You know what I mean? I, I don't even think he want to talk about his or whatever, but. Being on that high when you coming up and you getting 30 on them and then coming to that low, tell me how or tell me what it was that kept you from going under and giving up from that situation. At that time, like, I, I knew, like, I wasn't um, I wasn't giving up on the game. I, it didn't matter what it was going to do. What I, I mean, what it was. Like, if I had to have surgery and then get back from it, that's exactly what was going to happen. And um, my mindset is, like, I love the game too much to quit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've been through so much in my life. Like, having – going going through that, like, it made me stronger as a person. Like, a lot of people, like, a, a lot a lot of the times, like, a lot of people would quit. Not not basically, you know what I mean? They, they would give up on the game that they love. 
and my family, I talked to my family about it, talked to my people about it and everything like that. And it was just, it was just wild that it, it happened at that time because at that time, I'm thinking like, yo, I'm about to be in the NBA. Yeah. But then at that, when that happened, I'm like, yo, this really just hampered my shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, um, you know, go through the whole process of everything and, and you know, just get back to the next year. Let's go ahead and get back to the next year. That's right. Okay. So, <sighs> God damn, I hate telling about that part. Yeah, it's tough. Then it's the next part. So, you come back from that. <laughs> you get back on your feet. You go back, you go through the whole process of that. You rebuild. Your mind is back on. You get your confidence back. Something else gets in the way. Yeah. And you migrate through that. So just to give people kind of a gist of what's going on, Mo Creek had a, 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 a not a career, a, a season-ending injury as a freshman. After dropping yeah. very after, after, after inclinations of going in the lottery, for sure. You, think you, get in the you go to the next part. Which is the next year after you come back, you get hurt again. So after you get hurt again, what's going through your what's next? What what goes after that? What what's happening? I mean, you still at Indiana? Are you still at Indiana at this point? Yeah. On the second one. It's my second year. Okay. So you so, still at Indiana? So my so my thing is basically like, uh, damn. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all, like, 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 come like, on, man, like, damn, how many times is this shit gonna happen, like, yes. you know what I mean, like, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, like, I was, now, at this point, now, I'm like, yo, I'm crushed, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like, I had worked so hard to get back, I, I, and I went out there not even at 100%, like, that's what the people, a lot of people didn't really figure out, like, I went out there, like, maybe 75, 80%, and trying to just trying to be with the guys and play, play. Like yeah. I had to watch the whole rest of the season hurt. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it just, mad. I was just mad and upset at that time. So, you know, <laughs> it was tough. I was like, man, fuck this. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? like, it gets like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was crazy. Okay. So persevering again and again. It's another trial and tribulation. Now you move on to the next year, and you you play a year at Indiana. You finally play. A majority of the season of next year. That was the that that second year I played right. a little bit. Okay. Oh, that was okay. Okay. Off yeah. of back door, like so that game was when I was playing against Michigan. I was playing against Michigan or whatever, and um, and uh, Vic was taking the ball out, and I went for the ball and went back door, mm. and when I when he threw it and I caught it, I can already feel like something was going on with my right knee, and I laid the ball up and went in, but I couldn't get up. So yeah. I, had a minor, I had a minor stretch fracture in my right knee, and I had to get surgery on that too. Yeah, yeah man, that's that's tough. I'm gonna tell you right now, I would have did something different, but you persevered through that again. You persevered through that. Through. You wind up, you wind up entering the the transfer portal. What made you choose? Or what school did you go to? And what school? And why did you choose that? School? I'm missing the part. You know that, right? I know what. Well, you let me know what part I'm missing. You, y'all, y'all, you missing that? I, that I, <laughs> that uh, I played a little bit. Um, no, my third year, my third year as a junior, I got hurt too. Yeah, I know. Ah, that 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 one, that that one. That's the big one. But see, the, the okay, the difference between that one and the second one. At the third, that third one, I had a child. You know what I mean? So oh, now okay. I, I had my daughter mm -hmm. my, okay. third, my third year. When I had her, I was like, nah, forget that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what I know. This is how, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't give up on my child. Like, my yeah. child was like, I can't give up on my child. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 if I had to rank what was the hardest and how, how hard it was for me out of all three of the injuries that I had, I would have to say, shit, first, second, and third, because that first one hurt, because I was I was gone. We was gone after that. Yeah, yeah. I was gone after that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was gone, so I would I would I would say first, second, and third. 
Sheesh. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, Andrew, you're not talking about no yeah. Real, real mind, season, all of and it's all and, of them like season and ending joints. Yeah, you got yeah. the third injury is Achilles, not yeah, a knee. Jesus, Christ. yeah, it was tough. But then, yeah, uh, so yeah, you bringing me back with the speed. I slowed you down that time. Never mind that. I slowed you down. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Then I, uh, I put my name in the pool for the transfer. Um, Funny story about that, like, uh, I had talked around with some people, whatever, that was, it basically was more so like a, or just a wanted and not needed type of situation for me at Indiana anymore. Uh -huh. So I had to make a decision, like, I want to go somewhere where I'm needed and not yeah. wanted to be there. Yeah. So um, when that happened or whatever, uh, it was Texas, George Washington, and Marshall, those are my three schools that I had. It wasn't nobody else that was coming forth. It was nobody else that was coming forth or whatever. So, uh, you know, basically, like my whole situation of going to George Washington was home. Mm -hmm. We got my family here. Yep. I, I'm playing. We got my friends going to my game, my family going to the games and stuff like that. So it just was that, – that was the situation. I played, I played with the team. Uh I had good chemistry with the team. I knew a couple of the guys. One of the guys from Baltimore, Isaiah Armwood, he was with me. Uh, we both were seniors. We knew what we wanted to do for our mob, and we did it. it Zeke cool. will dunk right on you, and that's just – we just going to get that out the way. You feel me? I couldn't imagine y'all playing and practicing and seeing what was going on in there. So mm -hmm. you get down there to G-Dub, and, and, and you start 30 games. Out of the 32 games y'all played, you started pretty much all of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They put you in a rotation and you get back to Boogie and then you're only two points under what you was having as a freshman. Mm -hmm. So I know in your mind, you feel like, okay, I got this. This is – if I can do this, if I can just get back in a groove like this, I know it might take me maybe one more year to get back fully. Was that kind of going through your brain? Did you still have – I know – I mean, I'm not going to say did you still – what level of expectations did you have as far as going to the professionals, like as far as playing overseas, and what would you think that was going to be the next step? Because uh, I see, I mean, you would wind up leaving G Dub and going to the Netherlands and playing overseas. So, or was it was it the Netherlands first, or was it? Yeah, we got the Netherlands first. Okay, so. Did you have those thoughts of going? Did you or did you have any inclination that you'd be doing that, or did you just kind of just played the season out and see where you ended up after you got an agent and whatever? I mean, basically, like for me, I already knew I was going. I knew I already, I already knew I was going over. So mm -hmm. I already knew, like, for me at this at this point in time, like I already knew, like I'm good. Yeah. I, I just wanted to have the best the best situation for me as far as like. Um, you know, just relax. Like, right. like this, this is your, this your senior year. Like, you wanna, you wanna be able to have the best year you can have as a, as a senior. And I mean, a lot of people doubted doubted us too. Like, you gotta think about it. This is George Washington University. You got Maryland, Georgetown, George yep. Mason, VCU. Uh, who else? Like, you got all these schools from the area. Like, who is thinking like, oh? Anything about George Washington? You're yeah. mid major at the, you know what I'm saying? You're in the A10, but major who's thinking about you? You always been down in the, the down in the dumps and on the brink. Like, what nobody, everybody was putting us like, I was I was looking at the standings, the preseason standings, or where they had it. They had us 11 out of like 12 teams in the conference. In the conference, so I'm like, all right. So you know, me and Isaiah, we you know what I'm saying we are we already knew what it was. We didn't really had to talk too much because we knew like we, we had to lead our team to what we wanted to do right. or whatever. So, and I don't think me and Isaiah had a, even like a, a real conversation about what our goals were because we already knew. We already I've been playing against Zeke since I was little. You know what I'm saying? For him being in Baltimore, we playing against the Baltimore team. I'm in Maryland team. You know what I'm saying? It, it's been like that. But that that right there. Him being there is what drew me there, honestly, and it being from the area or whatever. But, um, shoot, we, you know what I'm saying? We beat a lot of teams, and that's how I knew we were good. I knew yeah. it wasn't just a fluke. We were we were actually good. We were beating teams, like, beating the brakes off of teams. <laughs> it wasn't like we were just beating them. We were beating the, 
the shit out of teams. A lot of people talk about that buzzer beater against Maryland. How it was? I know, I know, it was. Uh, it felt good to do that. Can you kind of talk about that game or what you felt like was the the most standout game for you as a senior? Yeah, I think that 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 stamped my senior season. <laughs> like, like honestly, I ain't gonna lie, because it was animosity. I think about it. Maryland was my favorite school growing up. Mm -hmm. They had already gave my scholarship away to Sean Mosley. Cause he was already he was 2008, I was 2009. We both were supposed to be 2008, but I had reclassed. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have another scholarship for me. So when I had was was on the transfer pool, when I was at the transfer pool, I was trying to go to Maryland. Mm. That's what people don't know. I was I was planning on trying to go to Maryland or whatever. So uh, they ain't even wind up showing no interest or nothing. They ain't holler at you nothing. No, it was no terrible. No? It was no interest. Oh, so my man. thing was like. When I play against Maryland and uh, one of my one of my little bros, like uh, Roddy, was on that team. So like, and I knew that was the matchup: me versus Roddy Peters, me versus Roddy Peters. Cause Roddy at that time was was all high on shit when he was at uh, Suitland, dogging yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? So my thing was now is now is uh, basically teacher versus the student type thing. Uh -huh. And so like we get out there, or whatever, and I knew Dez Wells too a little bit. So uh, we get out there, and I'm just amped. Now I'm ready to go. Like, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I hit that shot against them. And it was crazy because they was coming back. We was beating them the whole game, and they was coming back. And then, um, you know, Coach called a timeout. And Coach wasn't going to give me the ball at first. He wasn't going to give it to me at first. So that's what <laughs> some of the people don't know. I had to really, like, go up to him, like, yo, I want the ball. Like, go ahead, like give me the ball. I'm going on. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna just let me just clear it out. I'm gonna end it. Like just give me the ball. So he was like, "All right," you know what I mean. And it was. It was in like. It wasn't like give me the fucking ball or nothing like that. But it, it was like in a in a calm matter. Or whatever. Yeah, reassuring right. the man. Confident. Like, right. Yeah. Just confident. Once that ball was in my hands, and once I once I had it one on one, I just needed everybody to clear out to a point where it was no double teams coming or anything. I was gonna knock that shot down. So mm. so. He called a play or whatever. I'm just thinking about what the like the ball uh, gets. Uh, they throw it in the backcourt because you can throw it in the backcourt and call it. And when I caught it, I'm just thinking about what move I'm about to do. To <laughs> I'm about to do. And Nick Faust, that's from the area, was yes. one of the guys that that was the guy that was guarding me or whatever. And I'm like, and Nick is a is a hell of a defender. Like, yeah. Yeah. Six, Long arms, everything. Yes. So I'm like, and I see him up there. I'm like, man, what move am I about to do? And I end up cranking that step back, and he slipped just a little bit for me to get that shot off. And you know my, my how quick my release is, so I I shot it. That joint went in. We end up, I, man, it was it was one hell of a night. <laughs> <laughs> one hell of a night. That's yeah. crazy, man. For that's sure. what's up though. That that's 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 that was a big time shot right there, man. Y'all wound up making the tournament that year as well, right? Yeah, was, we uh, so yeah, it was the first time since two thousand seven that George Washington has made the tournament and we made it. So what would you mark as like your your best achievement in your college basketball career? Like out of all the things you've done, what would you put up at the top? I feel like making the tournament in my eyes, was the best because of the fact that I, I we made the tournament at Indiana, but I never felt a part of making the tournament. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I never felt as if, oh, I helped do that. It was always the other guys. I just was a part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to make it, and I feel like I'm actually a big part of the situation, that's – you know what I'm saying? That was like a big achievement. That was a big achievement for me. You know what I mean? So that's the biggest out of my whole college career, I feel like. And of course, you know, you had a couple of big games. I had a couple of big games. You know what I mean? The the Kentucky game was one of the biggest for me. Uh I think the, the shot versus Maryland would be the second or third best accomplish for, accomplishment for me just because I've always wanted to go to Maryland. You yeah. Know what I mean? And um it just never happened, but to show them that I was about it and get one off on them, yeah, that's what that's what I wanted to do. But um, yeah, so I would say top three would be making the tournament, 
the Kentucky game and the uh, Maryland and the Maryland day. Yeah, man. Those, hey, those, hey, a lot of people, that's that's three good ones right there, dog. Yeah. A lot of people can't say they got those. That's a bet, man. And we only got a couple minutes, man. This drink going to cut us off in like six minutes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you go. And we're going to say this for when you come through for the whole, the whole podcast. All right. But you got anything you want to tell them people before you get up out of here, man? Honestly, just don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't do something that you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't, of course, like, going up into high school and stuff like that, I was known, you know, I'm known around this area just because of what I do. But a lot of guys doubted me ever since, like, I was getting, I got hurt the first time, getting hurt them three times or whatever. A lot of people doubted what I could do. And I try to show, like, what I could do at any brink of anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I feel like I can get it done, I'm going to get it done because that's the mindset you got to have to be great. You know what I mean? So, like, um, for me, it was just, like, that's just, like, a, a testimony for a lot of these people. Like, some of these kids are not ranked. Some of these kids are not skilled. Some of these kids are not, you know what I'm saying, not anything like that. But – if you work hard and just be true to the game, the game will be true to you. You know what I mean? It's just like like dating somebody. You know what I mean? Like for me, like if you basically, you know what I'm saying, cheating the game, the game will cheat you. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you cheating on your girl, you damn the girl, damn they're gonna either break up with you or she'll get your ass back. Yeah. You know I mean? So my thing is I ain't never wanna cheat the game. I always wanted to be a student to the game. To this day, I'm watching film, I'm working out, I'm trying to stay in shape to the best of my ability for my next job. And you know what I mean? Trying to prove everybody wrong. Because, I mean, even even as far as the, the professional state go, like, it's, it's still some doubts in mind. Oh, his leg ain't all the way back right. Or, oh, this, that, and third. And then, you cut, and then you get me on the team, and I'm averaging 18, 19, 20, and whatnot. So, you know what I mean? Like, or take, you know what I'm saying, taking my team to some winning heights. It's just a matter of being the best player that you can be and working to be even greater than what you expect to be. That's a fact, man. That's a fact, man. I really I appreciate them words right there. Great words of encouragement. Definitely appreciate you coming on, man. Can't wait to get you on the podcast, yo. And like I said, as soon as I hit you and asked you to come on, you said I got you, and that was that. Man, for sure. You know, I love to talk about this stuff, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't wait. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. Hopefully, after all this mess, man, the league's open back up. We get to see you on the court this summer, dog. Doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know, I'll be out there for sure. I don't never want to miss no summer bump because that's the best bump for real. What? That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. I know you're going to be out there, man. Yes, sir. All right, man. Take it easy. Stay right, safe bro. out Appreciate here, yo. It. All right, you too, man. Stay safe. All right, bro. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my man, Mo Creek. Good job, my dog. Hey, man, my man, Mo, been getting it in for a long time. If you ain't never seen Mo Hoop, you might want to check him out. One of the smoothest, smooth killer. Yes, sir. Can't say it no other way. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, I met Mo a few years ago, man. I probably didn't played against him in the years past, but ever since I met him, he's been 100 with me, man. Just always kept it 100 with me. And uh, he's very talented, like I said, man. Y'all make sure y'all look out for Mo Creek and what he got going on in the summer. If y'all into into the summer league games and all that, he be tearing them all up. Brunson League, you know what I'm saying? Well, every every league he be getting in. With, with Sam's ballers right here. Oh, yeah. Definitely you know holding down for Big Sam and them. Get um, busy. Make sure y'all go check that out, man. Hopefully we get this thing back open this summer and you can see him. But I appreciate y'all, man, for coming through. We had a great interview today, man, and I'm going to holler at y'all next week, man.